Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, it's currently like the 3rd, I think, of January when I'm filming this. Um, I was thinking a lot of people probably got kendamas, you know, for Christmas, you know, through the holiday season, or you're just picking one up now and watching this video in July. Either way, if you got a new kendama recently and you're new to kendama, this video is for you. When I first started, I really wish there was a video like this one out there because the world of kendama can be kind of big and confusing and strange. So here's a list of kendama tricks, tips, and just things I wish I knew when I started. So let's get into it. All right, so the first tip I have for you is a pretty common one. You might already be doing this or have at least heard of it, but it is super gluing your kendama spike. Now, especially as a new player, you're gonna be missing spikes a lot and it's just gonna wear down your kendama really fast. Putting a coat of super glue on the tip will like sort of make a hard shell around it and just increase its longevity and basically just make the spike really durable. So I definitely recommend doing this if you're a new player. The best super glue I've found to do this with is this one. Uh, it's just made by Gorilla Glue. It's a brush like tip that's really important at least for what I've found. And basically what we wanna do is wipe away some excess glue, kinda of like, you know, when you were younger in school, you would like wipe off the excess when you do like watercolor painting. Same thing, just like try and get as little on the brush as you can, do a light coat around the spike, let it dry and do like two or three more coats. Should leave you a nice like glossy sort of spike at the end and it'll make your kendama last a lot longer. So a great investment that I found early on is a roll of string. Uh, this is made by a company called Lovely Knots. It's a lot of players favorites to use. You can find them online. This roll is probably like seven or eight bucks and it lasts a long time. Uh, you're probably used to getting strings like this in a little package pre-cut with a bead and a stringing tool, but sometimes they're not always the length you want. Sometimes, you know, especially as you progress through Kendama, you're probably gonna want a longer string, but not all string packs come with long strings. So I would definitely recommend picking up a string roll like this. I'll also leave a link for this in the description. It's just a great thing to have and it lasts a long time. So licking the bevel. I didn't actually know about this trick until I saw a pro do it in a competition. It's one of the first competitions I ever watched like on Instagram, I think. And I think it was Nick Gallagher, or maybe it was Zach, I don't know. But he just took his Tama and put it up to his mouth and did that, and I was so confused. <laughs> so it took me a little while, but I figured out that he was licking the bevel to get it moist and wet for stall tricks. And everyone does this. It's kind of like a weird thing for me to see at first because I, I was really confused and it kind of grossed me out. I didn't want to do it for the longest time. Just do it. It helps so much. Like, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, just like suck it up, put the Tama to your mouth, get it nice and wet, and you'll have way better luck with stall tricks. It just, it really does help the Tama stick. And yeah, it's just, it's just a great thing to do. Everyone does it. Just lick the bevel, you'll be all right. Okay, next up is wood types. Uh, and there's probably two main wood types you've seen around. There's a lot others, but I think the two main ones these days are beech and maple. Beech is a soft wood and it's usually a bit cheaper because it's less durable. Now, beech is also great though because it is a soft wood for stall tricks like birds, handle stalls, and wings. It kind of, the fact that it's softer almost like cushions the tama a little bit, so it's, it is nice for stall tricks, but it isn't as durable as a hardwood like maple or even ash. Now, if you're a beginner, I would probably recommend a maple kendama. Um, it's just more durable, especially because you're gonna be missing spikes a lot and probably even dropping your kendama a lot. I would go with a maple kendama. I think it'll last you a lot longer than beach. Bending your knees. Just do it. Just bend your knees when you're trying to lace a trick. It just helps in every way possible. Like, you know, it helps like cushion the tama if you're trying to do a stall trick. You have more time to sort of visualize the tama and see where the hole is to try and spike it. Bending your knees just helps in every way possible. And it's not like a beginner thing. It's not like beginners bend their knees and then you'll get better and not bend your knees. Pros bend their knees, probably more than anyone else. Like pros go to the floor bending their knees and it's for a reason. So when you're trying to lace a trick, bend your knees and I guarantee you'll have more success. So this next trick I have for you is called quartering the bevel. Uh, it's something I learned pretty recently but wish I learned a long time ago. What it is, is when you get a fresh kendama, the bevel, uh, which is basically the ring around the hole in the tama, this right here, is very crisp and sharp. 
uh, and it's not very great for stall tricks. So something you can do is take a quarter, put it inside the bevel, and just grind it back and forth, and it'll actually sort of wear away that very sharp edge uh, and take a little bit of the paint off. That'll really help soften it and be much better for stall tricks. Something to help speed up the process too is actually licking the bevel. Uh, you know, every now and then as you do this process, it'll help just sort of soften the wood a bit and help it go quicker and wear easier. But yeah, I think this is a great trick, especially if you're trying to do stall tricks out of the gate with a fresh Dama. So I think brand loyalty in Kandama is kind of dumb. Uh, you can have a favorite brand, like everyone does, but it's really easy to get sucked into a loop of only buying sweets Kandamas or, you know, Kandama USA or Chrome Kandama. A lot of people message me and say, I've only bought this one kind of Kandama. What do you recommend next? Well, there's like 50 other brands. Maybe that's exaggerating, but it, there really are a lot of other brands to try. Just pick one and try it. If they're still making Kandamas and are making new shapes and progressing, it's gonna be a pretty good Kandama. It might not be for you. It might be a bit slimmer than you like it, or you know, the shape is a bit too big for your hands or too small. But the only way you're really gonna know if you like it or not is holding it in your hands and playing it and testing it out because everyone's different and everyone's gonna like different things. So that's just a piece of advice. Try different brands. So this next uh, trick and tip is sort of just more of a word of caution, uh, and it's, I would try and stay away from sale kendamas, like kendamas that are on sale. Uh, I fell into this a lot and bought a lot of on sale kendamas early on, and it's not the best thing to do, especially if you don't totally know your way around the kendama world yet. As a new player, I didn't really know the differences between the paints, and I thought one looked good and it was on sale for cheap, so I went for it. Then you get it, it's got really small cups, the paint is so slick, you're, there's no chance you're gonna be able to learn like lunar tricks or lighthouses on it. Um, and it's just overall a bad experience. So I would try and stay away from sale damas. Just remember that like the on sale damas, they're usually on sale for a reason. <laughs> they're usually very old and not a lot of people are buying them anymore, so that's why they put them on sale. I would definitely recommend biting the bullet, by buying a slightly more expensive kanama if it's newer, has a more modern shape and has sticky paint. If you have those three things, it might cost a bit more, but I think you should definitely invest the extra five, 10 bucks or whatever into a better Kandama that has all of those things. I think it'll just make your playing experience so much better than if you bought some cheaper ones with, you know, a bad shape and bad paint. Okay, the next tip I have for you is huge. Please do this, but use your resources. There's a lot of good Kandama resources out there on the internet. There are forms everywhere, like there's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit has a Kandama Reddit, you know, thing. And, you know, just be involved and you can learn a lot from your peers and other people playing Kandama. Instagram is probably my favorite and I think it's probably the biggest community out there. It's such a great place to learn things, ask questions. Everyone is very engaging. So if you got a question, you can, you know, DM someone and ask them, leave comments. It's a great place to get inspiration for new tricks for you to try. Uh, it's, it's just an awesome community and I'd recommend getting involved if you can. Two other places you should check out are Downspike, uh, which is an online Kandama forum that covers everything. And if you have a question in Kandama, chances are someone already answered it there. So check out Downspike, the Kandama forum. Another great resource is honedmedia.com. Uh, it's got news, like updates, reviews on Kandama. It's just a great sort of site that cultivates a bunch of information about Kandama. If you're new into Kandama, you know, check out the reviews. They give a lot of information. A lot of it might even be confusing to you, but if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, it has a little verdict, like blurb, that gives a score out of 10 and a little bit like a one sentence synopsis of the Kandama, which is great uh, if you're looking for a new Kandama just to sort of learn more about them. So that's a great resource as well. I think that's it. I think that's all I have, at least. That's all I wrote down. Um, this is probably my most scripted video I've done. I had, like, some bullet points written down. But I think I covered everything, at least that I can think of. I probably missed a lot. Uh, leave a comment below with a tip or trick that I might have forgotten about, or if you have a cool one that you'd like to share. And if you're watching this and you're new to Kendama, check the comments. Someone might have left a useful tip. But uh, either way, hope this helped. Hope you enjoyed the video. More Kendama content sometime on the way. I don't like, I don't like saying soon because I have no idea to be honest with you guys, but uh, hopefully soon. I'll try and get something out for you. Uh, more reviews too coming up and uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff. So see you, see you in the next one.
It's been a, it's been a long time since I've done this outro. <clears throat> I'm rusty. Whatever, it's fine. Bye.